And if that's true, then smile. That smile is not for me, and that smile is for God, eh? Amen. Jehovah God, the I am that I am. We're in the month of December. And this is our month of glad tidings. I wonder if you could turn to your neighbor and tell them something good. Can you do that? Find somebody and tell them something good. In this month of December, you may not get another chance to do that, you know. Christmas coming, so much things to do. Find nobody and telling me nothing. Amen. Amen. God is good. I was just to make you smile. I don't like to come up here and see your face. God is good. Amen. I said God is good. Amen. And smile because Jesus, not Pastor Claire, because I might love you all the time, but smile because Jesus, uh, be human, you know, we don't always love people. Come on, we don't always love people all the time. You know, sometimes they just, just, you understand? But we serve a God who loves us all the time in the midst of everything. We do good, we do bad, we do in between. We believe, we don't believe. He loves us. He never changes. And that's why when you come into the house of the Lord, you can smile. Because you know what? His grace is sufficient. Amen? And he's the one who woke you up this morning. And he's the one who set you on your way. And I want us to sing a song before I minister. That will reduce the time, right? <laughs> See, Pastor Fireman watching me. No. I want us to sing um, a song, a, a song that says it's all about you. One of you worshipers will come and sing that song for me. We're going to praise this morning. We're in the month of glad tidings. And we have come to give God praise. And we've come to give him glory. And we've come to give him honor. Mr. Michelle, come and sing that song for me. It's all about you. Oh. oh, Lord, it's all about you. Oh, Lord, it's all about you. Oh, Lord, it's all about you. Oh Lord, it's all about you. You are holy in the morning, yes you are. You are holy in the afternoon. You are holy in the evening, yes you are. Oh Lord, it's all about you. Oh Lord, oh Lord, it's all about you. You are holy in the morning, yes you are. You are holy in the afternoon. You are holy. You are holy in the evening. Yes, you are. Oh Lord, it's all about you. Oh Lord, it's all about you. You are holy. You are holy in the morning. Yes, you are. You are holy. You are holy in the afternoon. You are holy. You are holy in the evening. Yes, you are. Oh Lord, it's all about you. Oh Lord.
have your seats. It's all about God. Amen? God is a good God. Just give him a wave because this is the day that the Lord has made. And we are going to rejoice and we are going to be glad in this day. Amen? Nobody knows what tomorrow brings, but we have today and we could rejoice today. Amen? This is a month of glad tidings and our scripture taken from Luke chapter 2, verse 10. We could turn to that scripture. Luke chapter 2, verse 10. And my message today is entitled, God of Destiny. Amen? Because we serve a God of destiny. We don't serve a God who does any, any things anyhow, all how. We serve a God of order, right? And everything God does, he does it with purpose. Everything that God touches, he touches it with the mindset to change, to transform. Amen? And we see that all through scripture. And our scripture taken from Luke chapter 2, verse 10, and I'll read 10 and 11, and it says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Amen? Christ the Jesus came with destiny in mind. Jesus came with a mission. He was a man on a mission ordained by God to fulfill purpose. He came to save me, and he did it already, thank God. And he came to save all of us in here who are saved today. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, right now, at the end of this service, we trust that you're going to accept him, that you're going to welcome him into your heart. Because the Bible says that all those that believe in him and believe on him would not perish. God sent him into this world so that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but they're going to have uh, everlasting life. Anybody in here has everlasting life this morning? Just give me a wave. Yes, Rizal, I've seen it all over you. Everlasting life. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was the fulfillment of prophecy. Amen? It was foretold thousands and thousands of years before he came. And I want us to read some scriptures. We're going to be reading a lot of scriptures this morning because... Bible says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So we're going to hear a lot about the word today, and we are going to begin to believe even stronger. Faith is going to be lifted, amen? So we want to read, the first scripture we're going to read is Isaiah chapter 4, verse 2. So we are going to understand that Jesus didn't just come as a babe, to just be a babe. Amen. He came because it was foretold that he would come. And we're going to read some scriptures that tell us of his coming, the eminent coming of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 4 verse 2 says, In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. And this is talking about the coming of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 11, verse 1. Isaiah 11, verse 1. And this is just setting the backdrop for what we are going to talk about today. Because God is a God of destiny, amen? And Isaiah 11, verse 1 says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Again, it's foretelling, amen? Verse 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Verse 3, next verse. Thank you for helping me. Technical. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove, after the hearing of his ears. And all of this is speaking about Jesus. Let's go to Isaiah 53, verse 2. And we see that in every verse of scripture that we are reading, that there's some 
characteristic that's ascribed to Jesus when he comes. Amen? And Isaiah 53 verse 2 says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. And the last one we would read, Jeremiah 23 verse 5. And it says, Behold, the days come, say the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Jesus' purpose was decided before the foundations of the world. Isaiah 42 verse 1. Let's turn to Isaiah 42 verse 1. Behold, my servant whom I uphold, mine elect in whom my soul delighted, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Jesus had a purpose. God sent him into this world so that he would save his people from their sins. God has ordained that he would come and set his people free. And this is the same God that created you, and is the same God that created me, and is the same purpose. At the end of the day, God, like I said before, God doesn't do anything out of order. He doesn't do things just because he just has nothing else to do. Everything that God does, there's purpose in it. Even when you read in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible tells us that the earth was without form and void and darkness was across the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Whenever God shows up, darkness goes. Things happen. Amen purpose is established. Let's read Ephesians 3, verse 11 and verse 14. And we see that God is a God of purpose. We read Ephesians 3, verse 11 and 14. And according to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we see that God had destiny in mind for Jesus. And everything that happened, everything that Jesus accomplished was because God put that God made that his purpose. God sent him into the world to do that. God tells us in his word that he knows the plans that he has for us. That's Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, I know the plans that I have for you. So plans to give you a future, a hope, and an expected end. I know the thoughts. Some Bible says the thoughts. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. God wants to give us a future, a hope, and an expected end. So, you know, you, you, you get up in the morning and you look at yourself in the mirror and, you know, sometimes things not going all that rosy in our lives because we have some good days, we have some bad days, we have some in between, right? But every time you look at yourself, regardless of what is going on around you, you must always remind yourself that you were created for a purpose. Remind yourself that you don't just exist because you just need to take up some space. You exist for a purpose. You were created to accomplish something, regardless of where you may be right now, regardless of whether you know the Lord or you don't know the Lord, at the end of the day, he created you for purpose. He created you to fulfill some mission, some assignment. And you know what? The world is waiting. Some of us have not even tapped in in any measure to the things that God has in store for us. And time is going. You know, the Bible says pretty soon he'll be coming back. Jesus will be coming back. And we need to understand that God has a destiny with your name on it. And you don't want to leave this earth and not fulfill that purpose, not fulfill that destiny. But however, you know, um, it's something that I always talk about. You know, as human beings, right, we make plans for our lives and we kind of organize and orchestrate and restructure how everything in our life will go from beginning to end. We plan out the husband, we plan out the house, plan out the car, we plan out the job, we plan out the children, we plan out everything. But you know, sometimes God has to step in because he's a God of destiny and because he created you, he knows what your purpose is. Most times, 
I shouldn't say sometimes, but most times, eh, God has to break in on our little programs. You know, God has to break in into our little movies, movie that we created for ourselves. You know, we have this movie, or we write this, you know, this book. We have all these dreams. And God, because he created us for purpose, because he's a God of destiny, he has to step in, and he has to take over. And sometimes when that happens, it could rock your very foundation. And you know what happens a lot of the times when our foundation is shaken and we cry, oh God, you know why, why, why? But a lot of the times those foundations are foundations that we built. They are plans that we had for ourselves. But God who knows the present, who knows the past, and who knows the future, knows what your destiny and what your purpose is. And the only way sometimes that we, we could get and step into purpose, God has to come in and rock us. You know, God has to allow trouble to come in. How many people know that the, the, the quickest way to find your purpose is to get into some trouble? You know, Bishop has a message. He says, the storm that blows you on course. And I don't know about you, but I have, I have been in some storms. Am I the only one who has been in some storms? You know, and I've been in some storms. And when you think those storms came to destroy you, those storms landed you right smack in the midst of your destiny. So sometimes when things, and this is just on the side, right? Sometimes when things not going the way that you want it to go, don't always be quick to ball, oh God, take me out. But look at it. Have some patience in the midst of it and see what God is doing. Because I've learned over the years that anytime God rocks you, he rocks you for purpose. If God allows the enemy to come into your life and he allows him, Bible says he has come to steal. And you know, Satan knows his purpose very good. Eh? He knows his purpose better than us believers sometimes. Bible says he has come to steal, he's come to kill, and he has come to destroy. And he does a very, very good job of that. Amen? He likes to steal, he likes to kill, and he likes to destroy. But thank God that in the month of December, we can remember that Jesus Christ came, that we would have life, and have that life more abundantly. So in the midst of whatever you're going through, just hold on. Because you don't know what's around the corner. And in the midst of that rocking and that shaking, God knows your destiny. You see, maybe you're not where you're supposed to be. And maybe if he doesn't step in and shift you from there, you'll stay there all your life and never accomplish what he wants you to accomplish. Amen? So sometimes God just steps in. He takes over and he begins to work his plan for your life. But in the midst of it, don't despair. Because he says, I know the thoughts that I have for you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. I am going to give you a future, a hope, and an expected end. Amen? And we need to believe that. Hold on to that. God is not a man that he should lie. And he doesn't repent. He doesn't turn back. He doesn't change his mind. You know, when we will change our mind today, I want this tomorrow, right? Sure, and the next day I want something else, and the next day, and the next day. I mean, imagine with that kind of mindset, we're trying to run our lives when we don't know what we want from one day to the next. We'll never be able to go anywhere. We'll always be two steps forward, ten steps backward, because every day we change based on the circumstances, based on what we see. Today, I want this if everything is going okay. But if it's not going okay, I change my mind. I want something else. And that's why God comes in as our Father to stabilize us. And to just drive us into where we need to go. So don't be afraid of the trials and the testing. Sometimes they're important. They're necessary to get you to where you are supposed to be. You know, I was reading, I'm reading the book of Exodus and reading the story of Moses delivering the Israelites. You know, and uh, you look at all the, when you go through the account of their leaving um, Egypt, and you read how many things God did, the, the, the miracles that God wrought on their behalf. And uh, 
so many things that God did to ensure that they, they escaped. And the minute they left Egypt, and something, things started to get a little rough. They were a little thirsty, a little hungry. The first thing they say is, to, they told Moses is, I don't know why he didn't leave us where we were. At least we had garlic and we had leeks and they didn't remember that they was crying out to God all the time. Lord, save me. Lord, take me out. Lord, rescue us. Lord. And from the minute he took them out, one little rough spot and they're ready to run back to something that you know wasn't good. That's why God has to be God and God can't be like us. Because if God was like us, I don't know what would happen. If God was like us, trouble for us, amen? So in the midst of everything, like I said, hold on. Things are not always going to be good. Yes, God rescued them. Yes, sometimes God rescues you from a particular situation, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be smooth sailing. You're going to meet giants. You're going to meet opposition. But the God who rescued you out of one situation, he's more than able to take you out of the next situation. And let me tell you something. As long as you are in the will of God, there's nothing that can destroy you. As long as you are walking smack dab in the midst of God's will and plan for your life, don't care the storms that come your way. You are going to stand. You are going to stand. If it's your plan and it's your you organize it, well, I don't know. You have to hope for the best. But as long as God is in the midst of it, you are going to come. Because you know what? He has a destiny. There's something that you have to accomplish. Each and every one of us in this place, there's something that you need to be to accomplish before you leave this place. You know, and when we're talking about praise and worship, and the Bible tells us that, you know, if we don't praise God, that the rocks are going to rise up and praise him. If you don't do what you are called to do, I mean, God has a program and God has a plan and he has to accomplish what he needs to accomplish. So if you don't want to do it, somebody else will rise up eh, and do what needs to be done. And at the end of the day, it just means that your crown, and I always say it, you will get one, but some of these faces will be missing jewels. You understand? So, at the end of the day, whatever God, there's destiny. And somebody needs to understand that today. It things may be looking like it's just not coming together. But there's destiny. In that storm, there's destiny. In what you're going through. And we want to take a look at some Bible characters. And we want to see how, what their lives were. And what happened to them because of the fact that God had his hand on their life. God had something for them to accomplish. And I mean, there are a lot, eh? So it was difficult for me to just choose, you know, like three. But if I can do all, because we'd be here whole day, whole night, and, you know. So I chose, one of the first people I chose was Joseph. But how many of us know the story of Joseph? How many of us know the story? Amen. So let's go to Genesis 37. And we just read a little bit about Joseph. We read from Genesis 37, verse 5. Now Joseph was the last son of Jacob. And the Bible tells us that Jacob loved Joseph. Amen. And Joseph had some brothers. Who didn't um, love him as much as his father did. Amen? And Genesis 37 verse 7 says, Genesis 37 verse 5, and we will re I'll read. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose and also stood up, Stood right, stood upright, and behold, your sheep stood round about and made obe obeisance to my sheep. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us, or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him 
yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And you know, sometimes we have dreams. And that, that dream that Joseph had was not of his own making. That dream, he may not have understood it at the time, but that dream, that, that vision that he got came from God. And God was showing him something that would happen in the future. And what happened is, and sometimes, you know, God gives us a vision. He gives us a word. And before it could settle good in our own hearts, we would go and tell somebody else. You know, because it's song. So, I mean, and Joseph, you, you, from the account, you know, he's sung in real excited, you know, because he he not even seen what God really wanted him to see. He just seen, you know, or they will bow down to me. I dreamed that, you know. And that wasn't even the essence of what God wanted to show him. But he made the mistake that we do sometimes. God was showing him his destiny because we know as we follow on with Joseph that exactly what he dreamed, what he dreamt, came to pass. But we also know that it did not come to pass so easy. Because as we read on in the life of Joseph, we see his brothers try to kill him. He eventually ended up um, in Egypt and uh, ended up in prison for a lot of years, a number of years, plenty years. And even though he tried to get out, he still ended up staying in prison. And you will tell yourself, but God, you give me this dream and you give me this vision. But as immediate, uh, immediately after you get this dream or you get this vision or God gives you this word, things begin to happen. Things begin to go a little off course. And most of the time, you know what we do? We say, you know what? I'm not able with this. I'm going back to do what I want to do because this is not working. But in the midst of all that Joseph went through, eventually, exactly what God said would happen, would happen. And his brothers indeed had to come to Egypt in the time of famine. And they had to bow down, all of them. The brothers, the fathers, all of them had to bow. When God gives you a word, when God gives you a promise, when God shows you a destiny, there's absolutely no one, there's absolutely no circumstance that could prevent that from coming to pass. It may not come to pass when you want it to come to pass. Because I guess, you know, when you hear it the first time, it's sung in real night. So you want to be, you want it to materialize one time. But even though God shows you your destiny, it's not always that that thing is going to happen right away. Things are going to happen in between. Because remember, in the midst of us getting these visions and getting this word, there's an enemy. We have the devil. He's there trying to rock your foundation to make sure that you don't accomplish purpose. So as things become, begin to get a little harder, you'll begin to start to doubt your doubt. And you begin to say negative things. And eventually, that thing that God wants to come to pass in our lives doesn't come to pass because we become afraid. Because we are tired waiting. 
And because, you know, God really didn't talk to me. And that's why I need to fix this myself. But just like Joseph, your destiny must come to pass. Regardless to what you may go through. God's destiny, God's plan for your life. Just like Joseph. And how many people know that we serve the same God yesterday. The same God that gave Joseph that dream. The same God that kept him in the midst of his captivity. In the midst of his bondage. In the midst of his stress. Is the same God that's looking at you right now with a plan for you. And it's the same God that brought Joseph through is going to bring you through. God has destiny in mind for you. God has destiny in mind for you. God is, I mean, to think that God who doesn't need anyone, he's God all by himself. He's God all by himself. He doesn't need us to exist. He doesn't need us, but he chose us at the end of the day, and he chose us because he wants us to do something for him. He chose us because we are special to him. Amen? And the next person that we are going to look at is Moses. Now Moses had no idea of the plans that God had for his life eh? until the day God broke into his comfort zone. And how many of us know we are sometimes in a little comfort zone? You know, we want to launch out but launching out would mean that I'm no longer going to be settled. And I may not know what is happening tomorrow or the next day or the next day. But in order for God to get you to where you have to go, like we said again, you have to come out of that comfort zone. You have to come out of that mentality. You know, I like it here. You know, you have to come out of the mentality where the, the Israelites felt, well, it's better we had stayed where we were. Because at least even though we were in bondage and even though people were treating us bad and even though we had to work so hard, at least we had something to eat. And we could so minimize the blessings of God. It's like when Esau gave up his birthright just because he came and Esau had destiny too. But the day he came and he was hungry and he said, what is this birthright? What is this to me? What is this dream? What is this thing God wants to birth in me? I ain't really interested in that right now. Right now, I just want to eat. But sometimes we make permanent decisions in our lives based on temporary circumstances. Permanent decisions, decisions that cannot be altered because we move in emotionalism. A vex, so I'll just do an X, Y, Z because I'm vex. I'm hurting, I'll do whatever. Don't ever make a permanent decision based on your emotions. Don't ever, don't ever, and I have learned that the hard way. You know, sometimes when you are mentally just not there, things are just, that's the easiest time. You know, those are the times we make decisions real quick. Quick, 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 we make those decisions. I know when we have time to sit down and ponder, and, you know, we wait and we, you're waiting and you're pondering, but when we're upset, it's so easy to do the wrong thing and say the wrong thing. And disrupt your destiny. So be careful of that. Be mindful of that in the midst of everything. Think as a believer before you act. Think before you do and say anything. So let's move, read um, Exodus 1 verse 8. Exodus 1 verse 8. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when they, when they fall it out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them out of the land. So because Israel was beginning to grow and increase, the Egyptians wanted to kill them. They wanted to, whatever they could have done to make sure or ensure that they don't, they don't, um, they don't increase in number. And there were a lot of things that they purposed. They wanted to kill their children and stuff like that. And Moses was an Israelite baby. 
destined to be killed. That was as far as the world is concerned. And you know, sometimes the world has a destiny. In, in, as far as the world was concerned, Moses was supposed to die. And as far as sometimes things happen, as far as the enemy says, and as far as what he purposes for us, he would say that, you know, you have that sickness, you're going to die. But that wasn't Moses' destiny. That wasn't how he was supposed to go. Moses, God had a plan to use Moses to deliver his people from the hands of the Israelites, of the Egyptians. But Moses didn't know. Moses didn't know. Moses eventually ended up killing an Egyptian, and he ran away for fear of his life. And the Bible says he was in the backside of the desert, tending sheep. And as far as Moses was concerned, well, that's it. That's it for me. And a lot of us sometimes we're in that place. We make a mistake. Something goes wrong. And we just, in our own minds, we say, okay, that's it. I'm all washed up. Nothing is going to come of this. My life is over. I'll just settle down here. And that's what Moses thought, that he would just settle down, tend some sheep, and that would be the end of his life. But he didn't know that God had a destiny in mind for him until he met the burning bush. And until God spoke to him and told him exactly what his mission was, exactly what he needed to do. And of course, like a lot of us, God comes to us and say, like God will say, Lisa, you have to lead worship. And, or he will say, Deacon Marilyn, you know, you have to come up and minister or chair service. And he said, Minister Curtis, you have to do the baby dedication this morning. You know? He will say, Lisa, I need you to act in the cantata. But it's hung in far fetched because act, sing. Do a baby dedication and never do that. And the first reaction we have is, God, not me, send somebody else. Because that's what Moses, Moses told him, you know, I can't talk. I, can't, I, 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 I don't know what to do. I, I, I just sat at the, the one, Pharaoh wouldn't listen to me. How many of us guilty about, how many of us guilty, be honest, in church? How many of us guilty of that? God will tell you, you know, I need you to do X, Y, Z. Me, not me. Go and ask somebody else. But when the minute you begin, and that was what Moses said as person. You know, we re read in the story, God got a little agitated, eh? God just gets a little agitated with us sometimes, eh? Because, I mean, God sees you for who you are. God is seeing Moses for who he is supposed to be, who he created him to be. And Moses was content to see himself as the stammerer, as the, I can't talk, Pharaoh won't listen to me, he must be studying, he killed whatever, all his past, and can't see what God has in mind for us. Because we look in the mirror every day and we see this flesh body and we forget that this is not who we are. The real us is inside. Man is a spirit. You are a spirit being. You are not flesh and blood. This is just the, the, the casing that houses you. But the real you is on the inside, and you can't see the real you, but God sees the real you. And God knows what you can do. God knows the treasure that he has deposited on the inside of you. And when God calls you to do something, as long as you are sure that it is God, I want to encourage you, don't run away. Don't run away. If he calls you to do it, he will equip you to do it. You may not know how to do it right now, but he's a God that can do anything and he says you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. So when he calls you, yes, you'll be intimidated, but I want to encourage you. Some of us, God may be speaking to us and we are hesitating because that's not sounding like me. That's sounding like the person down the road, so I am not going to do that. And we sit down and we sit down and we sit down and we don't accomplish anything. We just live our lives day to day. But God is calling on you. God has destiny in mind for you. God has purpose. And Moses eventually, even though God had to send him help, God sent Aaron because after a while God said, you know, too many excuses. I'll have to send somebody. 
But he didn't need Aaron. Eh? If he had just trusted in God, he would have been able to do it all by himself. But at the end of the day, his destiny was fulfilled. Even though at the time, he was in the backside of the desert, just mining sheep, not really wondering, not really thinking about anything. God stepped into his life and turned his life around. And because of that, Israel was delivered. Because he eventually decided to be obedient, deliverance came. And you don't know who God, who is waiting on you. You don't know who is waiting on you. Somebody, somewhere, is waiting on you to rise up and accept what God says about you and to do what God has called you to do. Amen? And we'll read, up, we'll read um, Esther. It's the next person that I chose. And we know the story of Esther. Esther also was instrumental in preventing the destruction of the Jews. And we read Esther 4.14. Now, Esther had discovered a plan to destroy the Jews, right? So she went to her uncle Mordecai about it. And Mordecai told her in, chapter, in Esther chapter 4, verse 14, he says, For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And this is what Mordecai told to Esther. And we know the story of Esther. Eventually, she was able to save her people from being destroyed. And Mordecai told her, who knows if God hasn't placed you in the kingdom for such a time as this? Who knows? Who knows if you are not in this place today for such a time as this? The thing about it is we don't know because God doesn't reveal things to us sometimes. He doesn't tell us anything, but he will orchestrate stuff and he will do things to get us to where we need to be. You may be in this place today. You probably didn't know you would have been here today or maybe you knew you would have been here today and your purpose here today, you have one purpose here today, but God, the God of destiny, has another purpose for you in mind. God knows why. You are in this place today, and something good is going to happen to you today. Something is going to change in your life because you are in this place today. God is going to rearrange some things because you're in this place today for such a time as this. There's purpose when you get up. God has purpose for when you get up. God has purpose. You understand? He, he woke you up this morning, and he set you on your way because there are things that he needs for you to do. Amen? God has destiny in mind for you. And we read about the prophet Jeremiah. It's the other one that I chose. And like Moses, Jeremiah made the excuse that he was too young. You know, God called him again to be a prophet for his people. And Jeremiah, like Moses said, you know, I'm too young because he couldn't see what God was seeing. He couldn't see who he was. Because he spent so much time being him in the flesh that he couldn't see who he was. But you know, God sees us and God knows us better than we know ourselves. And God knows the things that we are capable of doing and the things that we are not capable of doing. And in the midst of it, God still has his hand on us and he still says, there's purpose in your life. There's destiny in your life. And when we go into the New Testament and we read about how Jesus um, appointed his disciples. Jesus' disciples were fishermen. Right? On the day that Jesus met some of them, they were actually doing their work and sometimes we are doing our own thing, minding our own business. And then again, like I said, God steps in and changes things around. And because Jesus pulled them out, Jesus told them, you know, you are fishermen, you're fishing and you, you're catching fish. But he said, I'm going to make you fishers of men. And that was the destiny that God had in mind for them. 
that they would become disciples, that they would evangelize, that they would win the world for Jesus Christ. And again, that was not in their plan. That was not in their thoughts. I'm not, they, they were fishermen. They were going about their own business. But God stepped in. God broke into their world and rearranged their lives. And then we have the Apostle Paul. And we know Saul, Paul, Saul who became Paul, was persecuting the Jews, thinking that he was doing something good. And on the road to Damascus, God met him one day. And that meeting changed his life forever. For before, he met, before God met him, he was killing Christians and destroying people in the name of God. And sometimes we know we do things and we say we are doing it in the name of God. We are doing it for God. But God is not with us. God is not in what we are doing. It may seem good to us in our own minds, but that doesn't seem good to God. And God stepped in, and God turned his life around, changed his name, and he began to evangelize. The Bible tells us that, I mean, he evangelized practically the whole of Asia because God put his hand on his life. And when God has his hand on your life, you have no, I mean, there's no limit to what you can do because he's a God of destiny. Amen? And you know, sometimes as we, we went through those um, Bible characters that fulfilled their purpose, and you know, there are some who, even though they fulfilled their purpose, it took a little, God had to convince them a little bit. They didn't go so easy. And one of them was Jonah. You know, God called Jonah to go to Nineveh to preach to the people there. And immediately Jonah got that call. The Bible says Jonah went, jumped on a ship, and went to Tarshish because I am not doing that. I didn't, I didn't foresee that for myself, so I am not. Jonah refused. Jonah refused to do what God had told him to do. So Jonah thought that he could get away. And sometimes we think that we can get away from the plan that God has for us. Sometimes we think if we run far enough, run fast enough, that God wouldn't see us. But God saw Jonah. The Bible says that God prepared a whale, a big fish. And as Jonah was on the sea, and the sh there was a, a, a shipwreck, a storm, and that big fish swallowed up Jonah who thought that he was going to Tarshish, thought that he was going to run away from what God had in store for him. You can't run away from God. You can't run away from the plans that God has for your life. No matter how long it takes, God is going to bring it to pass. No, longer, no matter how much you fight him, God's will and purpose for your life will be accomplished. And Jonah spent some time in that, that, that fish, that big whale, and eventually when he came to himself, you know, and the, the Bible says that the whale deposited him right on the shores of Nineveh where he was supposed to have been in the first place. Sometimes we like to go the hard way. Like Jonah. You know, God is calling us and it's easy sometimes to say yes, eh? but we prefer to say no. Because, like I said, you know, like we discussed before, that is not me. I don't like that. I'm not going there. I don't like those people. I can't do this. I can't do that. And Jonah probably had the same misgivings. But at the end of the day, where did he end up? Right on the shores of Nineveh to do what God has called him to do. Don't go the hard way. As human beings, I guess we like to do things the hard way, but God is calling on you today. God is saying, you know, I have something for you to do. Some of us already know what it is. Some of us already know if we're honest with ourselves, we already know what God has called us to do. But I could just put it off. And I'll just wait. Maybe somebody else would take up the mantle and I wouldn't have to do it. But the time is drawing nearer. Time is drawing nearer. And every day is a little closer to the coming of Jesus Christ. So every day that you put it off, it means that you're closer to him coming and it's, you're closer to not 
accomplishing that purpose or that plan that God has for your life. You know, it's okay to come to church, but we come to church to be filled. We come to church to be rejuvenated, to be refreshed so that we can go back out and do what church is not a liming spot or resting place, you know. Church is where we come in, we get some more food, and we go back out there to do what God calls us to do. We sit down in church so many times, and we think, okay, as long as I come every service, Sunday, Wednesday, if I have any special service, I'll come. And we think that that's it. But God didn't just save you to just come and sit down in church. You know, the Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the excellency of the power will be of God and not of us. There's treasure. On the inside of every inside of every one of us, there's treasure. Some of us die with it. Some of us die with it. I was reading a book and it said, you know, one of the richest places in the world is the cemetery. Because so many people died without fulfilling purpose. For some reason or the other, either was afraid or either whatever, some human reasoning. And you die with all your dreams, all the visions, all the plans that God would have been able to accomplish in you if you had just said yes. If you had just said yes. God sent his beloved son into the world that whosoever believeth in him would have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus steps in. All you have to do is just say yes. Don't try to figure out what will happen tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Take one day at a time because his grace is sufficient and his mercies are new every morning because he knows you will need mercy. The, the mercies of yesterday wouldn't be enough for today because we go through different things at different times. But God's grace is going to allow you to fulfill purpose. If God has called you, if God has said, listen, this is what I want you to do, he will not allow you to fail. It will come to pass. It will be accomplished, but you just need to believe. Amen? There's purpose, and like we said before, as I kind of recap, there's purpose in that trial that you're going through. God said of Pharaoh that Pharaoh was raised up so that God would be glorified. Sometimes evil comes, but it's because God is going to get the glory in the midst of it. It's because God is going to be shown as mighty, and the enemy is going to be shown as the liar that he is. But as long as God has a purpose, as long as God has his hand on your life, it is going to come to pass. And we just want to read some scriptures that talk about our destiny, right? And we'll read John 15, 16. In case I've said all of that and you're still not convinced that God has a plan for your life, we'll read John 15 and verse 16. And this is what God says about you and what God says about me. And we need to really, you know, hide his word in our heart and trust that his word will not return void, but it will prosper and it will accomplish everything that he wants it to accomplish. Amen? And John 15, verse 16 says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. God says, you have not chosen me. I am the one that has chosen you. And I have ordained that you go forth and bring, go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit is going to remain. God is the one that called you. Amen. Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28, 28, 28 says, And we know that all things, not some things, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And that's something that I tell myself a lot of times when you see things not going so good, you always have to remember that all things, everything that has happened in your life thus far, as long as you know Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior, it is going to work for good. Everything. 
Because the Bible says that if we love God, then all things work together for our good because we love him. Amen? Romans 9.11. Romans 9.11 says, For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that call it. And this speaks about the poop. Again, it speaks about the purpose of God. And the purpose of God is that we arise and be his children, that we arise as sons and, and daughters of God. Amen? Second Timothy 1 9. And Second Timothy 1 9 says, Who had saved us? And I'll read from verse 8. Be thou not, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Again, it speaks about God calling us according to his purpose. And the last scripture we read, First Peter 2, 9. And it says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness, and into his marvelous light. We are chosen. Those two words, we are chosen and we have purpose. God chose you. And God will bring his plans and his purposes to you to pass. Amen. It's an eternal purpose. It's a purpose that, you know, nothing can take away and nothing can destroy. And God wants to launch us into purpose today. Like I said, you're in this place for such a time as this because maybe there's something that you've had on your heart and you've been thinking about it and thinking about it but for some reason you're just not launching out into it because you, it seems impossible or it seems far-fetched or it seems like, you know, this is not me, I can't do this. But God has destiny and purpose. He has purpose for you. There's something that you need to do and I want to encourage you today. You know, if God is speaking to you, that you really need to connect and you really need to trust that what he says he will do, he will do. What he promises, he will do. If God has given you a dream, if he has given you a vision, if God has given you an idea, something that needs to be booted and you're just holding it back because of whatever reasons, maybe what people have said or what people, what you have done in the past or whatever it is, if God has placed his hand on your life, then it's going to come to pass. Remember, we spoke about Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. Thoughts to give you a future, a hope, and an expected end. If God is in the midst of it, it will not fail. If God has said it, it will come to pass. It is your destiny. And it's time to step into your destiny before it's too late. It's time to step in because like I said, pretty soon you know the Bible says we have to work while it's day because the night cometh when no one can work. It's day for you now. Arise and shine because your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. It's time to arise and fulfill purpose. You're not washed up. You're not it, it, it's not hopeless. You know there's still life. You're, God has you alive. That means there's still something that you need to do. There's still something that you have to accomplish. Forget the past. The Apostle Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind, I press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. He said, you know, it's not that he apprehended, it's not that he understood everything, and we would not always understand everything. And everything will not always make sense. But the one thing that we need to hold on to is that God says, I know I know, I know 
the plans. I know the thoughts. I know the destiny. I am the one that ordained it. And God never fails at anything he does. He always comes through. Always comes through. He says his word never returns void. But it's going to prosper and it will accomplish everything that it has to accomplish. He says his word, just like the dew, it falls down from heaven. And just like the dew waters the earth and causes it to bear and bring forth fruit, he said, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return void, but it's going to prosper and it's going to accomplish all. Amen? Let's just stand to our feet. Stand to our feet. God is indeed great. And do we have anyone in here who would like to ask Jesus Christ into their heart today to reign in their life and to be their Lord? You know, we go out there and we don't know what tomorrow may bring. But we have today. We have today and we have now. We have right this minute. So if there's anyone who would like to ask Jesus Christ into their heart today, I want to encourage you to lift your hand and we'll pray with you. Trust God that you're going to fulfill destiny. Trust God that you're going to fulfill purpose. And if there's anyone who needs prayer, then we can do that too. If you just want to just connect with God, then you have that opportunity even now to come forward and we'll just pray with you. Just thank God for what he wants to do in your life. And if not, we'll just pray. Just lift your hands to God. Father, we give you praise and we give you thanks. God, we thank you that you know the plans that you have for us, Father God. We thank you that those plans are good, Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, Father. That you're going to give us a future. You're going to give us a hope. You're going to give us an expected end, oh God. Your purpose for our lives today shall be accomplished in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak, oh God, empowerment, oh God. I speak your favor and your grace over your people, oh God. I come against fear, oh God. I come against intimidation, oh God. I come against doubt, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, and I declare that we are going to step into destiny today, oh God. We are going to run, oh God. We are going to run. We are going to run this race, oh God. And at the end of the day, Father God, you're going to say well done because you would have accomplished your purpose in the name of Jesus. Cause your anointing to be upon us, oh God. Cause your grace, cause your mercy, and cause your favor, oh God, to be upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for being in our midst today. And we say, Father God, have your divine way in and through our lives. In Jesus' name, and we say, Amen and Amen. You may have your seat. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to pick up this morning, uh, well, this evening, this afternoon, tithes and offering. If you have your tithes, as our custom is, you can come to the front. If it's an offering, we're just going to lift it up and we're going to bless God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are not going to go through that long set of reading, but I will just pray at this time. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the tithes and the offering, blessed God. Father, we thank you, God, because you are the one who have blessed us, Almighty God. You have given us wealth, Heavenly Father. And today, as we come, Heavenly Father God, just to bring our tithes and our offerings unto you, Father God, to the altar, we ask your blessings upon them in the name of Jesus. Help us, Almighty God, to continue, Father God, to be faithful to you in bringing our tithes and our offering unto you, Almighty God, in Jesus' name, amen. I give, and it is given unto me. I give, and it is given unto me. I give, and it is given unto me. The measure pressed down and running over. I give, and it is given unto me. I give, and it is given unto me. I give, and it is given unto me. The 
mash my friends down and running over. I give, and it is given unto me. I give, and it is given unto me. I give, and it is given unto me. Good measure, press down and running over. Good measure, press down and running over. Good measure, press down and running over. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for the tithes and offering that we have received, blessed God. We just bless it, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we say, let this do what it has to do in this ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, we have some baby dedications to do at this time. I'd like to call the parents and the godparents at this time. Can you please come? Come to the front. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. It is important for us to recognize that we need to give God our children from a tender age. Amen. You can come, those of you come. Come forward, and you can just step forward. Amen. Come forward. No problem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How much we have for? Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, as you are coming, I just want to read. I just want to read for you. Just before we hand over your children to these women of God. It is taken from Psalms 127. And the word of God said, except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that built it. Except the Lord keeps the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he gives his beloved sleep. Lo, children are in heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that had his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gates. Amen. Hallelujah. You may give your children one, two, three, four, yes. Just take them under our just before. Um, who, what's this one name? We have Dasha Amanda Darlene Gill. Could you be first? Who's, you go first. Serenity Felma Tanisha Tobin. Daniela, is it Vian or Vian? Vian, all right. Collins. Ativa, Cassie, Esther, Waldron. Amen. Just before we dedicate these children back to God, Verse 4 of this scripture that I just read, it says, As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. I want you parents to recognize something today. These children, they are really not yours. But God just loaned them to you. He loaned them to you to bring them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. He loaned them to you 
to properly instruct these children. And I want to admonish you today, parents, to do exactly what it is God desires of you. You just heard about purpose, what the minister spoke about. And one of your purpose right now in life is to ensure that these children grow up in the right way. God, parents, I want to admonish you at this time. You are not just here today for the first time to stand with these parents and after that, they don't see you. You are here for a reason. You are the God parents. You are to help the parents bring up these children. It's not just about you are coming here and from here, you know, well, we're going to have a party. And I just want to encourage you right now, parents, that even if you are having a party for these children, please, put the children in a room where they wouldn't hear this music. Because this party isn't really for, for the children, just in case you are having it. It is really for you, the parents. Right? So, we don't want to bombard the children's mind with all kinds of music, but I'm really trusting God that if you are having a party, you're going to put the child somewhere where it would not be disturbed. Amen. God, parents, you have a role. It is a very important role as God parents to stand with these parents. I'm not going to say that the parents may not sometimes be able to see about the children. I'm trusting God that he's going to provide for you parents all the days of your life so you can really bring up these children in the way that he wants you to bring them up. But God parents, you are there to help guide these parents to nurture these children and to bring them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Can you all say amen? And that simply means, and so shall it be. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dasha, Amanda, Darlene Gill. Father, we anoint this child in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My God, and even as I watch this child, I see her as one who is inquisitive. But God, for good reason, she wants to learn, Almighty God. She wants to know about you. And Father, I bless her this time in the name of Jesus. And I decree upon her life that she shall stand strong, almighty God. She shall be a woman of God, a woman of destiny in the name of Jesus. I come against every childhood disease that may try to perpetrate this child's life in the name of Jesus. I speak against it right now and I say it shall not affect this one in her childhood in the name of Jesus. Father, I decree, my God, that she shall be excellent. I decree, God, that she is intelligent. I decree, Almighty God, that she is brilliant. Hallelujah. My God, I decree that you shall open ways for her, Father, to just breathe through life, my God, in comfort and in peace, my God. Hallelujah. I come against the enemy who's going to try to snuff this one out from a small intendage. And I decree that this one shall live long, my God. And she shall fulfill destiny in her life in the name of Jesus. I bless Almighty God in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Serenity, Felma, Tanisha, Tobin. This one sleeping. Hmm. Father, we anoint this one in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. My God, even with everything that is going on around this child right now, she's at peace. She's at rest. I decree in her life peace, my God. I decree your peace. Father, your peace which passeth all understanding. I decree upon this child life. And even as she's sleeping now, Father, 
I say, God, so shall she be in comfort all the days of her life. I say, nothing shall trouble this one, Almighty God, because you are standing with this child. My God, I see you protecting her, Father, from the wiles of the enemy. Father, I see you, Almighty God, fighting for her. When the enemy rise up against her, God, I see you standing strong in her life, God, in the name of Jesus. I decree this child blessed beyond measure, my God. I see her, Almighty God, as one who will speak your oracles, Father. As one, my God, who will lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My God, I see her as a mighty warrior in your kingdom, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I see her, God, as one who is a leader, my God. She will lead her peers, Father, and she will not follow them. She will lead them, my God, in a direction that is godly, almighty God. Father, I bless this child. And I come against childhood diseases right now in the name of Jesus. I decree, my God, that it shall not affect this child in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But God, she shall live a life of beauty, God. Jesus. She shall live a healthy life, oh God. She shall live a life of prosperity. Father, not just in physical wealth, oh God, but Father, in mind, in body, in soul, and in spirit, my God. A healthy life. Father, I bless this child. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Danielia Vian Collins. Lord, Father, oh God, we anoint this child, almighty God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, I say that this child shall not be troubled, my God. But God, I say she shall live abundant life. Blessed God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I decree upon this young lady's life, peace, O oh God. I decree, my God, stability. I decree, O oh God, willingness in her life, in the name of Jesus. My God, I say that this child shall live a life that is happy, O oh God. Even as she cries, Father God, Father God, I speak your comfort unto her in the name of Jesus. And I decree by your power, Almighty God, that no childhood disease shall affect this child in the name of Jesus. But God, I plead the blood of Jesus upon her life right now, God, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Almighty God. And I say, God, I release your warring angels and your protecting angels to stand guard around about this one, my God. Protecting her from the wiles and the plan of the enemy. I say that she shall fulfill purpose and destiny, my God, that you have purpose in her life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ativa, Cassie, Esther, Waldron. Glory to God. Father God, we anoint this child in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Such a calm spirit. Such a calm spirit. Father, even as she sucks. <laughs> On that, what we call a comforter, and she's comforted God. I decree in this child's life that you shall be her everlasting comforter in the name of Jesus. My God, I see her as one who is brilliant. Father, I see her as one who is resourceful. My God, I see her as one who is virtuous, blessed God. And I thank you for her life. Father, I bless her in the name of Jesus. And I speak your peace upon this child's life, almighty God. <laughs> Father, I speak your joy in her life. I say, God, she shall be so joyful that she will bring joy 
in situations that may be experiencing turbulence. Hallelujah. Father, I see a God that's rejoicing and bringing happiness to a home, Almighty God. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you for this little one. And my God, I know because of that we know the devil, my God. Father, I just plead the blood of Jesus upon her life right now. I say, God, insulate this little one with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, you are her keeper. I see your glory as her rare God. I see your excellent almighty God. I see your courageous. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I see her bringing joy, my God, not just to her household, but Father, anywhere she goes, I see her bringing joy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I see her as a peacemaker. Father, I bless this child in the name of Jesus. I say that no childhood disease shall affect this one in the name of Jesus. She shall grow up to be a tremendous woman of God, a woman of virtue. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father, I bless you for this one. I say thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, Father, I just... I would just, I'd just like you to do one thing for me. Just lift your hands. One hand, just lift one hand. Thank you, Lord. Father, as these here lift their hands to heaven, my God, the parents and the God parents, Father, I pronounce our blessings upon them in the name of Jesus. I decree, Almighty God, that they shall look at their children seriously, Father. My God, they shall bring them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give it up, parents. In, in the name of Jesus. Father, I decree, my God, that they shall have all the resources that they need to ensure that these children, Father, lacks nothing in the name of Jesus. My God. I see them turning their lives around because of these little ones. In the name of Jesus. I bless them, Father, and I thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You have any um, gifts that you need to get blessed for the children? Any trinket or anything? You all have anything? The Godparents bought anything? We just want to bless it at the time. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Almighty God, for this gift. My God, it is not a gift to bring this child in bondage, but it's a gift, Heavenly Father, that's expressing your love for the child. Father, I bless this gift, this token of love in the name of Jesus, and I declare as this child wear it, Almighty God. It is not to guard the child, for God, you are their God. But it's, as I said, it's just a token of love. Father, the child in growing up, this token will remain until they reach childhood, from child, from babyhood to childhood to adulthood, my God. And they shall remember this. They shall see this as a memorial of the love of the person that gave it unto them, for them. I bless it, Almighty God, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You could give them back. Glory to Jesus. You know who it is, right? Who is who? Amen. Amen. One parent could just say, the rest of you could go back just to collect the arm, the certificate. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you have an offering that you choose us to bring to give, we have no, no reservation whatsoever in accepting it. Amen. Well, at this time, we are rounding up. We are coming to the end of our service.
And we have, as it is on first, the first Sunday of every month, we collect our missions offerings. You see, we know that the gospel service isn't over as yet. We know that the gospel is free. But the pipeline in which we channel it towards the people costs money. So we are just asking for a missions offering at this time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would the worshiper just come up and just sing at least two, two um, verses in a song as we collect our missions offering. Hallelujah. You may just come. You could come out and just put it in the basket. I give and it is given unto me. I give and it is given unto me. I give and it is given unto me. Good measure pressed down and running over. I give and it is given unto me. I give and it is given unto me. I give and it is given unto me. Good measure pressed down and running over. Good measure pressed down and running over. Good measure pressed down and running over. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Almighty God, for those who give. Blessed God, we just ask your blessings upon their lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Uh, you may place your orders for CDs or DVDs at the service, after the service, at the House of Wisdom. Remember, you can use the depository at the end of the downstairs corridor during the week or any time you want to give an offering. Do we have any persons visiting with us for the first time or after a long time? I know we have some. You could just please come forward. Hallelujah. This is going to be quick. This is going to be quick. We have someone to take them downstairs. We have anyone? Amen. You could just come forward and just follow this lady here. We want to treat you. We want to treat you today. Amen. Hallelujah. So you can take your personal belongings and come and just follow this beautiful lady downstairs. Go ahead, sister, to come in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, you all could go down too. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. New believers are welcome to our membership and believers foundation classes on Tuesday at 6 p.m. in the conference room.